Grade 3 Math, number 43, Missing Factors, Variables. What is a variable? What is a factor? Well, let's take a look here. When you have a multiplication problem, the numbers that you multiply together are factors. The answer is the product. So if a factor is missing, you would say, mm, something times 3 equals 6. Well, instead of having a blank space there, we put a variable there, an alphabet letter, okay? So look, in algebra, a variable can take the place of a missing number. A variable is a letter of the alphabet that holds the place for a missing number. To vary, see, variable, vary, to vary means to differ. So that means the alphabet could differ in what it stands for. Okay? So, let's do this easy one here. Let's do addition. The N is taking the place of the missing number. The N is going to stand for a number. N plus 2 equals 5. What could the N be? Well, we could just do reverse and say 5 take away 2 equals what? 5 take away 2 equals 3. That means the N equals 3. See how I did that? I went backwards to get the answer. Now, I'm going to show you something that they do in algebra and they do in multiplication. What they do is they put a dot instead of an X for times table. Instead of this X, they put a dot. So they would take this away and they would say 2 dot 3 equals 6. See? The dot means to multiply. Now why would they do that? Well, they do that because of variables. What if your variable was an x? If your variable was an x, it would look like this. x times 3 equals 6. See? And you can't do that. You can't say x, x. So what they do is they take the x away and they put a dot. See? That way you don't get confused if the variable happens to be an x. So now let's take a look at some of these, okay? P is going to be our variable. It's going to stand for a number. P times 3 equals 6. P times 3 equals 6. Something times 3 is equal to 6. Well, you can actually do division. You can say 6 divided by 3 equals something because just like subtraction is the opposite of addition, division is the opposite of multiplication. Now, I know we haven't really gotten into division yet, so I don't want you to worry about this so much right now, okay? I want you to just think of your times table for right now and think of what the P could be. What times 3 equals 6? If you know your times table, you know that 2 times 3 equals 6, okay? Let's take a look at this one. Here's the variable s. We've got to figure out what the s is taking the what number it's taking the place of. S times 10 equals 40. What times 10 equals 40? 4 times 10 equals 40. So the variable s is equal to 4. Okay, let's try another one. A times 4 equals 12. Something times 4 equals 12. Do you know your 4 times table? 3 times 4 equals 12. A is equal to 3. 3 times 4 equals 12. See? Let's try this one. Now the variable is a Z. It's the letter Z. So some number times 7 is equal to 21. Do you know your 3 times table? 3 times 7 is 21. So Z is equal to 3. See? And that dot comes in handy because we don't want to put an x there because that could be a variable. That could be another number like right here. x times 3 equals 18. Learn your 3 times table. Something times 3 equals 18. Let's count by 3's. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The x is going to equal 6. 6 times 3 equals 18. So you see how the variable takes the place of the number? And it can vary? 
Just because x equals 6 here doesn't mean it always equals 6. The next problem, it could equal 5 or 100 or anything. Now, sometimes in your math book, it'll tell you what the variables stand for, but that's just for that one problem. That means for this one problem, they stand for this. In the next problem, they could stand for something else, okay? So, if a is equal to 3 and b is equal to 4 and c is equal to 5, what would be a times b? a times b. It would be 3 times 4. See that? 3 times 4 is 12. So a times b is 12. What about a times c? Well, a is 3. Put our times dot. c is 5. So we have 3 times 5. 3 times 5 equals 15. See how I did that? What about b times c? b is 4 times c is 5. 4 times 5 is, how, how much is 4 fives? Let's count by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20. So 4 times 5 equals 20. Now, in this problem, n is equal to 2. See over here, n was equal to 3. And p is equal to 10. But in that problem, p was equal to 2. So see how it can vary? It does Just because they're equal to this now doesn't mean the next problem they're going to be. So what would n times p be? Well, if n is 2 and p is 10, it would be 2 times 10. And 2 times 10 is 20. So n times p is 20. See how we did that? So variables are just letters of the alphabet that are filling a blank space that can help us solve the problem. They vary from problem to problem on what they equal. If a equals 3 here, it's just an accident that it equaled 3 here. But do you see how n equaled 3 over here, but over here it equaled 2? So it can vary from problem to problem. Now also remember that if you can put a dot instead of an x for times table, not only will it be more grown up, like mathematicians use, but it'll keep you from getting confused when you do variables. You wouldn't say x, x, 3. That would be very confusing. So that's variables. That's missing factors. I hope this helped you, and I'll see you next video. You're doing a good job. Keep it up. Remember, practice that times table.